Come now, everlasting spirit, bring to every thankful mind all the Saviour's dying merit, all the Saviour's, all his sufferings for mankind. True recorder of his passion, now the living faith imparts, now reveal his great salvation, preach the gospel to our hearts. Come thou witness of his dying, come remembrance of him fine, let us feel thy power apply, Christ, to every soul and mine. This hymn by Charles Wesley, I welcome you to tonight's service, um, our eighth in the series of John Wesley's sermons, entitled, The First Fruits of the Spirit. Let us turn to God in prayer. Lord our God, we we seek the Spirit to do the work that is needed in our lives today. We thank you that the Spirit has brought us into this place, for we know that it is not simply by our choice that we are here, but by your Spirit's guidance. And as we worship you tonight, may we worship you not in our own ability, but in your Spirit that enables us to worship in spirit and in truth. And as we listen to your word today, may your spirit bring into our hearts and minds the things that we need to know. May your spirit enable us to respond in the ways which brings life. As we talk to you, our God, may your Spirit take our words and make them known to you, our God, that through your Spirit we may be truly in touch with you, our God. May your Spirit do a work within us not only to make us brand new, but also to equip us for the tasks that you set before us. Fill us through your Spirit with the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. May your Spirit equip us with the necessary gifts, the gifts that we need to love those who we cannot love on our own, to do that that we are incapable of doing in our own strength to withstand all that will be thrown to us by the evil forces in this world. May your Spirit give us the strength to be able to resist and stand. And so, Lord our God, we ask that through your Spirit at work in us today, we will find our lives transformed, renewed, and given purpose. We ask this in and through the precious name of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Our scripture for today is Romans chapter 8. And I read from verse 1. Romans chapter 8 follows, quite strangely, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 speaks about the struggle that we have, knowing what we need to be doing, but finding ourselves unable to do it, knowing what we should not be doing, but finding ourselves doing it, and asks the question, what an unhappy man I am, who will rescue me from this body that has taken me to sin and to death? But answers, thanks be to God who does this through Jesus Christ. And so Romans chapter 8 says the following. There is no condemnation for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit which brings us life in union with Christ Jesus set us free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do because human nature was weak. God did. He condemned sin in human nature by sending his own son, who came with a nature like sinful human nature, to do away with sin. God did this so that the righteous demands of the law might be fully satisfied in us who live according to the Spirit and not according to human nature. Those who live as their human nature tells them to have their minds controlled by what the human nature wants. Those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. To be controlled by the human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. So people become enemies of God when they are controlled by their human nature for they do not obey God's law, and in fact they cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. But you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you to, if in fact God's Spirit lives in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you, because you have been put right with God. Through your, though your sinful bodies are going to die because of sin, if the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from death lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of his Spirit in you. We'll end our reading there. The text for today's message is Romans 8 verse 1. There is no condemnation now for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. What we mean by those who are in Christ Jesus is those who have placed their trust in what Jesus has done for them. Those who are made new by Christ, those who are put right with God by faith through the grace of God, those who walk not after their human nature, but those who walk after the Spirit of God. What it means that there is no condemnation is that God justifies. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, God takes away all condemnation through the work of the Spirit. Now because this verse has led to so much misunderstanding and some very dangerous false teaching. We need to explain who are those who are in Christ Jesus and what it means that there is no condemnation. So who are those who are in Christ Jesus? Well, it is those who believe. Those who are made right 
with God by faith who are incorporated into the very life of Christ, grafted on, as it were, to the vine, being one with Christ, Christ in them, they in Christ. These who are so in Christ do not sin. The old human nature, because of its very root found in sin, produced the fruits of sin. And, they, and our lives could not do otherwise. If we live by our human nature, our lives produce rotten fruit, bad fruit. Sin is our only fruit in our lives. But those who have crucified the human nature, who have put to death the deeds of the flesh, abstain from those things which used to be so much part of life. They abstain from all evil actions. There is no more hatred, no more um, drunkenness, no more adultery, no more um, of all those things that, that come out of the corruption of the soul. And what is produced is the fruit of the Spirit. Because we are in Christ Jesus, the natural outflow of the work of the Spirit is those good works that God enables us to do through the Spirit. The Spirit gives us a heart overflowing with love, a heart that has a desire to do what God wants us to do. The Spirit enables us to speak the words of grace, the words seasoned with salt, with love. Words that, that bring about peace to those around us. The Spirit produces within us actions which are just, merciful, and filled with truth. The Spirit enables us to live our lives completely and utterly for God. If we walk after the Spirit, we are filled with faith and we produce good fruits. We are alive with God, being rooted in the Spirit there comes out of our lives such good things as love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. These are those who are in Christ Jesus. How then is there no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus? First of all, there is no condemnation for the past sins. The sins of the old human nature have been forgiven, have been cleansed out of our lives, and there is therefore no condemnation to us anymore. We don't stand condemned, we stand forgiven. We don't stand forgiven because we have managed to do it on our own. We stand forgiven because God in God's grace has completely forgiven us and put us right with God. So there is no condemnation for past sin. 
There is also no condemnation within ourselves. No sense of, of guilt. No sense of a dread of what God will do to us. For the Spirit of God witnesses with our spirit that we are forgiven. The Spirit of God affirms within us that we are children of God. The Spirit enables us to, to approach God as a loving Father with the words, Abba, Father. The Spirit enables us to not have the heart that is filled with guilt and dread. Yes, there may be lapses. There may be times when we fall into sin. But when we do, we need to realize that at that moment we are not in Christ Jesus. And we need to once again come to the throne of grace. We need to once again come to the God who does not condemn, but who forgives freely those who repent of their sin and trust in the work that he has done. There is also no condemnation for present sin. We those who are in Christ Jesus do not satisfy the desires of the human nature. And because we do not satisfy the desires of the human nature, there's nothing to condemn. There is nothing within those who are in Christ Jesus that they do at the moment that is worth condemnation. For their lives are not lived in sin but are lived in the Spirit of God. There is no condemnation for inward sin. Though the, the sin that used to hold us so tightly in bondage, still vestiges of it still remains within our life. There are still those thoughts that are not 100% where they should be. There are still those habits that, that sometimes linger in our lives. Because when God justifies us, He puts us right with God. But He also begins a process of transforming us, of changing us, of taking out of our lives everything that is sinful. But that does not happen overnight. That does not happen immediately. But those remains of sin that is still part of us are not things for which we are being condemned. They are things in which God is busy working in our lives. God is pleased with us if we are growing in holiness. There is no condemnation for the growth process. There is no condemnation for those feelings of inadequacy where we feel as if we have not done our best, where we feel as if what we have done is not 100% right. We are not condemned by those feelings. They are part of the process of our growth in holiness. There's no condemnation for sins of infirmity. In other words, we may do something 
that we believe at the moment to be the right thing, but discover in the process that we have done it incorrectly or done the wrong thing. But we are not condemned when we did not sin on purpose, when we did not sin with intent. We learn through this. We grow through this. But we are not condemned when out of not knowing any better, we have done something wrong. There's no condemnation for weakness. And this is not a spiritual weakness because we are not working according to our, our human nature. We are working with the Spirit of God. But what there is no condemnation if, for instance, God says, I want you to worship me, but we are not well, we are sick, and so we can't go to church. God's not going to condemn us for that. God is not going to condemn us because circumstances prevent us from doing the right thing. We will be judged by what we have, not by what we don't have. There is no condemnation. It does not mean that we will never be grieved. There will be times when we feel that we have that we've let God down, that we've let ourselves down, that we've let community down. There may be times when we are grieved, but this grief comes not out of a sense of guilt, but out of a sense of knowing that with God working in our lives, we can do better. It's part of the growth process. We want to do more. We should want to do more. We should never be completely satisfied that what we are doing is 100% right. We should always want to do better, always want to do more. Sins of surprise. You know, when you hit your finger with a hammer, and a word pops out that shouldn't pop out. Or when you get into a situation where you are all of a sudden caught and you do something in reaction that you shouldn't be doing, or you say something that you shouldn't be saying. Sins of surprise are a little bit more tricky to talk about. Although we are not completely condemned by them, there may be some condemnation. Because there may be a sense in which we should have been more prepared. We should have done more to, when we land in a situation like that, that we don't react in the wrong way. And also, when we react, when we do something out of surprise, what is revealed is that there is still sin within us. There will not be any bad actions that come out of us if there are no bad actions within us from the start. And so once again, this brings us to the point of saying, God, we need you to continue. We need you to continue your work in our lives. So if there is any condemnation, it is not a condemnation that condemns us, but a condemnation that brings us to repentance and brings us to the foot of grace so that God may continue to work God's work 
of transforming our lives. Some practical implications of all this. If there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, why do we sometimes still fear? Why are we not more confident in what God is doing? Why don't we rejoice more in Christ? Let us not fall into this spirit of fear. Let us rather enter into the spirit of rejoicing. Rejoicing not in what we can achieve, but rejoicing in what God achieves for us. Having been forgiven, what if I sin again? Well, repent. Turn to God. Live as a child of God. A child that does not make a mistake and never go home again. But a child that says to the Heavenly Father, I'm sorry. Please forgive. Please restore. Please bandage up my wounds. Please kiss it better. Please make things better. Make things right once again. Do all who live by the Spirit of God not sin? Well, if our heart condemns us, we need to come to the foot of grace. We need to come to God. For there is no place, no place whatsoever for sin in those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who are in Christ Jesus can not sin because the Spirit of God lives within them. Those that sin have a father called the devil. Those who live by the Spirit produce the fruit of the Spirit. We need the constant work of God in our life. When we talk about no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, we are not saying God is finished. We need to understand that God is still doing a work within our lives. It's a process that is called sanctification. We are made right with God by justification. We are transformed completely through the process of sanctification, both work of God in us rather than work that we do. We need to give glory to God and not boast in what we have achieved. If you fire fall, get up. Let God forgive and heal. Those who are in Christ Jesus don't never fall, but they get up if they have fallen. For God is always ready to forgive and restore and heal. Those who are in Christ Jesus walk in love with peace of God in their hearts, peace within themselves, as they grow towards being blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you very much for joining us in this message. If you watch this message on video, I would appreciate um, that you indicate that by either making a comment or, or a response of some sort um, and making a comment. I have been following the, the messages of John Wesley as closely as possible and um, some of the thoughts may be slightly strange to many, but I would like to just let the words of John Wesley speak as much as possible. Thank you. Let us close with a prayer. Lord our God, we submit ourselves once again to the work of your Spirit within. We are sorry for the times we have let you down. And pray that your Spirit will transform us completely. that there would be no condemnation for us who live in Christ Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.